Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are carrying on with our overlocker. Now I've had such a lot of comments and you guys cannot believe how much I appreciate it that you actually come back to me and say that you've learned something, that you understand something better now. It actually just makes me want to give more information to you at the end of the day. Now, now we've done all the basics. We've looked at our uh, basic stitches, our overlock stitch. We've spoken about differential and our cutting width as well. Now I want to go on and just do some of our other stitches that we can do with the overlocker. Now I'm going to concentrate today on my um, rolled hem. I'm going to show you the flat lock, but I specifically want to show you if I want to work with decorative threads. How am I going to set in my machine? What do I look for? So that is what I'm going to do with you. I'm not going to do some, there's some parts I'm actually not going to cover in these videos because I've already done previous tips videos um, that is on my YouTube channel. One of them you'll see where I've sewn with elastic. Um, the other one was, uh, I think it was also stabilizing where I actually sewed in a tape into the shoulders as well as soon as I work with knit fabrics and I need to stabilize somewhere. Remember I mentioned that when I work with my knits, most of the time I work only on my overlocker due to the differential feet that I can use and preventing the stretch. Now, if I'm working with a knit, for instance, on the shoulder, I don't want it to stretch out. Otherwise, by the end of the day, it's almost as if the shoulder line is not sitting there anymore. It's actually grown a little bit and it's dragging down on the arm a little bit. Now, there I stabilize it. Go look for those videos as well. I will put them in the information box at the bottom as well. I'll put links there and go and watch those videos. So I won't be covering that again in this basics that we are doing. Now, all of you have seen in your manual, if you've taken your manual out, that you do have more stitches than just our four thread and three thread overlocking. You would have seen the roll them. You would have most probably seen a flat lock that you can do your flat lock as well. Now, I'm going to show you just the basic settings on my machine and give you some tips when I'm doing those stitches, what you've got to look out for. A little bit of troubleshooting, if I can put it that way, because um, in the shop, I always have people phoning me and they say, oh, I've got loops going to the left of my stitching, all that. And I just want to mention that to you because you cannot believe how many phone calls I do get on that. And I do, it's such an easy fix, really. So we'll look at that as well. And then... Um, for me, it's important that if I work with thicker threads, I love working with my thicker threads. Now, if you look at the picture I'm showing you, I'm actually putting these sort of threads against a normal polyester thread that we work with so that you can see the thickness of this. Now, this one specifically has got a bit of a sheen to it. Um, it's actually our upholstery thread with a bit of a sheen. We've got Madeira threads as well. Um, this is the Madeira Decora number no. six, which is also a thicker one. And I'm going to talk you through working with these, how thick the, the thread can be, how, um, you know, where, where am I really pushing it too much, if I can put it that way. So we are going to look at all of that as well in, in this talk that we're having on our overlockers. Let's look at our rolled hem now that we're going to do. Now, first off, if you look at your manual, you are going to see that you will have to change your settings. Now, what you will notice as well is that your bottom looper, which is the one totally on the right on your tension, uh, on your tension discs, you will notice that they tell you to take that to a higher tension. Now, the reason for that is that if I don't take it to a higher tension, all I'm actually going to do is just a narrow hem. That is all I'm going to do, which we will also cover it uh, with you. But with going with to a higher tension, that bottom looper is pulling tight. So my top looper thread is literally being pulled all the way to the bottom, folding my fabric, and that is giving me the roll effect that I want. Now, again, like I mentioned, you've got to follow your, your tensions in your in your manual i really don't know what your machine is going to ask for and that's why i'm also going to talk you through a little bit of troubleshooting so that you can just fine tune it certain things that i want you to look at to fine tune it and the next thing that we are going to look at for rolled hem as well you'll see it in your manual is we're going to go to a shorter length we're going to change our cutting width so we're not cutting on such a big cutting width the more fabric i'm leaving um, the untidier almost my roll is going to be and sometimes it won't roll it properly so I need to cut off more fabric meaning I'm going to a lower number on my cutting width or if you don't have numbers you are moving that bottom blade to the left of your machine 
Okay, so you're taking it all the way to the left. The only time when I don't do that is if I'm working with really sheer fabrics like my chiffon, then I like to leave a little bit more fabric. Um, I don't cut off as much because with a chiffon, if there's not a lot of grip on that fabric, I'm going to sew my roll them and I can literally just peel it off. So with chiffons, I don't follow my manual. I actually go to a higher cutting width and I test it till I'm happy that I've got enough of that fabric rolling in that stitch. You can literally at the bottom go and see where that roll ends. And that's going to tell you, do I have enough fabric in these stitches or is there too little? And if there's too little, you'll also see as it's rolled, you'll usually see a bit of the fiber sticking out, giving you a very untidy roll them as well. Now that is what I want you to look for. When we're going to sew now as well, there's also a bit of troubleshooting that I want you to do when we are just fine tuning our tensions. And I'll talk to you now as soon as we start sewing it. Now, going to three thread, I think I've just got to go a step back. Uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you this. Now going to a three thread, and this is part of what happens to a roll them as well. Some people don't remove their left needle. And if you don't remove that left needle, if you look at this picture that I'm showing you now, look at those loops going to the left. That needle is literally still there. It's still catching my top looper. So look at this photo where I've tried to zoom in on my top looper. Look how that needle is still catching my top looper thread, but there's no thread in the needle to keep that top looper thread down on my fabric to form the stitch. That is why I get those little loops happening where I'm not actually sewing it down. And it again happens with three thread and also with my roll them, just my three thread overlocker and my roll them. So if you see that, immediately go and look, do I have my left needle in still? If you do, please remove it. Um, I know a lot of people are a bit wary of removing their needles, but it's gonna give you a bit of an untidy finish at the end of the day. Now, going back, sorry, I just wanted to mention that I actually forgot to mention that, but now going back again to our settings. My machine, when I start sewing, I'm gonna show you where I actually move my stitch finger away. Um, I know the really older machines, you had to actually change your stitch plate, but most of them we don't have to anymore. So go and have a look for this on your machine as well. And then we're going to go to a smaller stitch length. We are going to go to um, differential normal or one, unless I'm getting puckers or it's stretching my fabric out. Then I will engage my differential to either, again, prevent puckers, to smooth it out, and there I will go to a lower number on my differential if I'm stretching out on a fabric where I don't want to stretch it out. And that is sometimes, especially if we are working on these soft, sheer fabrics, I really don't want that wave then I can go and engage differential again to a higher number and it will just push in more of the fabric from the front than what's going out the back and that at the end of the day is going to prevent that stretch for us. Now I'm going to just go to my machine, I'm going to set it up and then I'm going to talk you through the rest of the steps. We're going to start with our roll them now. So you've gone and you've removed your left needle for me, you're leaving your right needle in. I've got this stitch lever over there. And this is just going to pull, remember we spoke in the previous videos, we spoke about my stitch finger. Now when I pull this away, it actually just pulls that stitch finger away. And that is now, you'll see on the photo that I'm showing you, because it's moved away, there's no support for my fabric. And that is then when my fabric, as soon as I sew, the fabric is going to be able to buckle because there's no stitch finger that's lying under the fabric for the stitch to form. Your next step will be going to your tension dials. We are only going to, for now, on my machine specifically, again, as I said, I don't know what your manual is saying, but I start with my bottom looper and I'm going to go higher. Mine will be happy on about a six and a half to a seven and a half that I'm working with. Some machines will tell you to maybe go half up on your um, top looper. I leave mine on my basic settings for now. I'm gonna test it first. And then the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to go and turn my stitch dial to a smaller stitch length. Now, some of yours will have an R for a rolled hem. Some of yours will have just a little line. Um, and anywhere in between that will give me my stitch. 
Again, my manual is giving me settings, but I'm using that as a guide. I go and again, I say, what is my fabric wanting when I'm sewing? Does it want a slightly longer stitch length than what the manual said? Or does, do I have to go make a smaller stitch length? So this is really, I want you to see your manual as your guide and your starting point. It isn't set in stone that that is gonna work for all fabrics. They've gone when they've set in your man or set in the machine and put it in the manual for you. They've most probably used a cotton, a lightweight cotton fabric. Now I'm going to be working on all sorts of fabric. Again, we've rolled in. We can't have heavy weight. That heavy weight won't actually fold for me. It's my softer fabrics that I'm going to work with, but some of them will have a bit of a stretch to it. We're getting a lot of stretch, soft stretchy woven fabrics at the moment. So you might even have a bit of a stretch woven, um, even our knits. So all of that I've got to take into consideration, but I will always start on a basic setting on my basic fabric. And from there, if I'm happy with the setting, then I can go to, let's say, my stretch fabric or whatever fabric I'm working with and just fine tune that setting for myself. I'm doing a roll then. You can see this is a softer cotton. As I said, poly cotton, your polyester cotton is also soft. It will fold your viscose fabrics, all of that, but get more... Uh, stable fabric to do your test then the other thing that i want you to also look at before i move on is your differential make sure your differential is on normal and one we are testing now to see what i need to do for my fabric and i'm just going to go ahead and just sew it remember that i did mention about the cutting width you can go down on your cutting width and test as well and but if it's chiffon we're working with a higher cutting width that I need. I don't need to cut off as much fabric then. There we go. Now look at the photos that I'm showing you. Can you see what a perfect rolled hem looks like? Look at the back side of that rolled hem as well. I want you to notice that my top looper thread has actually pulled all the way to the bottom and it's lining up at, with that bottom thread for me. And I can also see that the fabric is cooled nicely. Now, sometimes when I work the rolled hem, I can also get the looser loops to the left of the fabric. So can you see the loop sticking out on the picture that I'm showing you there? Now, if that happens, that means that my top thread is too loose and it's actually pulling past that stitch line that I want. And that is when I know, okay, Go and just tighten my top looper just a little bit and I can go up half a setting and that should be able to pull that stitch back again so that we've got that nice neat finish on the edge of that stitch. Another thing that can happen and I'm going to show you here. Can you see the puckering that I'm getting? Now sometimes on soft fabrics I'm going to get a little bit of a puckering. Now if that puckering is going to happen then I'm going to need to engage my differential and I need to go to a lower number, go to my lowest. Some of our machines will be 0.7, some will be 0.5, whatever the lower one is. And all that's going to do, literally again, if you look back at the videos we've done on differential, it actually pushes less fabric in on the front of the foot than what's being pulled out. And in effect, I'm pulling the fabric tighter and I'm preventing that puckering from happening. Again, the other way around, and I'm giving you all this troubleshooting stuff, guys, because this is really important. The other way around is I'm getting a little bit of a wave. Now, if I get it making more of a wave and it's on a wave and let's say it's on my chiffon and I don't want that wave, then I can go and I go higher on the differential. Again, fine tuning my stitch more. Do you see the options that we have just on our old hem already? What we've got to look for, how I fine tune it, and also just getting that perfect, perfect stitch every time that I'm working with. And remember, don't forget about your cutting width. I want you to also look at the cutting of that fabric. Is there enough fabric that's folding into that stitched area to give it that nice roll? And again, if there's too much fabric in there, you will also notice it because then it's, you'll literally see it's almost distorting my stitch or it doesn't want to roll properly. So those are the things that you're going to look for when we're troubleshooting with our rolled hem and you're going to work on different fabrics. So every fabric is really going to 
react differently at the end of the way at, at the end of the day so you've got to make sure what that fabric needs now the fun part is once you sort this out you can now go and add a decorative thread we've got all these beautiful variegated threads that we can do rolled hems with i just love working my rolled hems with a, a variegated thread now we get our variegated threads in our 100% cotton, like our Gutemans. We also get the variegated more in a rayon thread, which is my embroidery threads, which is going to give me a bit of a, almost a bit of a shine to it. And then we've got our threads, which is our, um, our stretchy nylons almost that we get as well. It stretches out a little bit and it almost fluffs up and give me a bit of a satiny stitch on that rolled hem so we can play with all of those threads but now i want you to be aware that most of the times you're not going to need to actually change tensions but if it wants it i want you to be able to go to your top looper uh, tension and you are going to change that for me now if we are going to work a rolled hem with a variegated or a decorative thread I want you to put it in your top looper only. Your needle, the right needle, and my bottom looper will be still my polyester thread. I'm still going to match it to the color of either my fabric or if it's a color I'm picking up in my variegated thread, but only in our top looper. Now, these are the Gutemann cottons, 100% cottons. Just look at this beautiful colors that we get there is such a big variety of colors that we have and we do have these in stock as well so you can always contact us to find out about these um, threads but when I've put this in now again I only need one reel of my decorative thread because it's only for the top looper I've gone ahead and I've done my rolled hem Look how beautiful that variegated look is now sometimes depending on the fabric it actually shows that variegated thread off a lot more for me I've done my test I'm happy with the front but I want you to have a look now I'm turning it to the back and I'm going to show you a picture close up I've got a couple of loops that and I'm going to go this way I've got a couple of loops that was formed over there and that for me I have to fine tune um, I'm very specific when I work with my overlocker I want a perfect stitch all the way and I will go and definitely it's not doing it everywhere but I can see there's a problem and maybe going over to another fabric it's going to be even more of a, a issue for me um, I will go slightly higher with my top tension because those loops are pulling over that is my top thread that's come over to the bottom but it's come past that stitching line over there and that just means I need to pull it back a little bit so that again means tightening a little bit so it's just pulling a little bit tighter and not giving me that can you see when you start looking at tensions it is literally going up a little bit down a little bit that is all it is it's no major changes and as soon as you can see okay that's a problem and I know that was the top thread because I can see it's my variegated thread and that is the one that I need to fine tune that is the odd thread I can almost say on my machine at the moment all the others are my polyester thread we've just finished with the roll them so please be sure that you go and set your machine back to your normal basic settings whatever your tensions was your stitch length and don't forget your little stitch lever so many times I even go and I sew without putting the stitch finger on there and then I don't get a proper stitch it almost looks like it's wanting to fold my fabric still with the normal overlocker stitch so go and do that for me I've now gone and also put my left needle in I took my right needle out put my left needle in because I want to do a wide flat lock so that you can see it clearly you will see that you can do a right a needle which is going to give you a narrow flat lock or a left needle which gives us the wide flat lock stitch now whatever your instructions is first go test it but I'm going to tell you what I do with my machine and it always works for me um, I don't really go to my book for to look at what the tension should be the only thing I do I go to my bottom looper I set it to the highest tension I go to my needle which is now my left needle go to the the lowest tension that's literally guys all I do with my overlocker I don't follow the settings there I just found that this always gives me a perfect perfect finish because we want to have this needle thread very very loose 
and very tight so that I can get the effect that I want. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to sew this. Now first off, can you see because I'm not holding on to my thread, look what's happened. I'm showing you all these things because this is also a bit of a troubleshooting video. And that is because I'm not sitting in front of my machine. If I'm sitting in front of my machine, I would have made sure to hold on to my fabric. Remember, my, I went on my bottom looper and I made it to the highest tension. Obviously, it's going to go and it's going to pull in that fabric for me because that thread is pulling tight. Now, I want to... I can go and smooth it. So when you are going to cut off, just make sure you've got enough thread left so you can go and smooth it out. And when I get to this area, my machine, I can hear the difference when I've made it tighter. And you will also hear on your machine when your bottom looper is so tight. It's actually sounding a bit more clunky almost. And it's easy now because it's pulling tight that I can, when I sew off, also go and break a needle. I just go quickly back to my fall tension and I sew off. And give yourself a little bit of thread there. I don't want it unraveling at the edges. Look at my needle thread. Remember we went to the lowest tension. Can you see this little V forming? That is my needle thread that was pulled up. Okay, and I need this to happen. If it's not pulling up all the way to the edge, I can't pull the fabric and open it up to get my flat lock stitch. So that is what the back will look like. That is what the front looks like, like a normal overlock stitch. And all I'm going to do now... I pull it flat. There we go. And look at that. We've got a beautiful flat lock. Now, sometimes when I do work with a firmer fabric, you might find at the back, and if you look at that, can you see it's almost folding in a little bit? Now, on a firmer fabric, I actually go and I wiggle it a little bit, it goes flat. Or otherwise, I take my, I've got a all that I usually work with. Let's just take this one. Um, if it's on a garment, if it's a cushion, I'm not going to be worried. But on a garment, I do want to just flatten that seam at the little at the back. And all I do, I just flatten it. Can you see how it's flattened and there it's slightly rolled in? That just happens because we've cut it and I've just got to get it flat. But really, on a firm fabric, I would literally go and I just do that. And you'll see it will just move out. This fabric's not allowing for it. So I'll take my awl and I'll just move it so that I've got a flat stitch. Now, if we look at the front... This is my flat lock stitch. At the back is what they would call a ladder stitch. Ladder stitch is also lovely to work with. I can go and make my stitch length longer and then you can take a small piece of ribbon and maybe thread it through like every third or fourth thread. You actually put that uh, ribbon through there and it's going to give you a beautiful effect as well as a decorative stitch now. We are looking now at our decorative stitch. This one on the front almost gives me the idea of having a, almost like a cover stitch. Not, I don't have a cover stitch a, a function on this machine, but it almost gives me that look. And now if we're going to start looking at what do I want to show on the right side of the garment, do I want to show my flat lock stitch, do I want to show my ladder stitch. And that is going to tell me where am I putting my decorative thread. All right, if I'm going to be wanting my decorative stitch on the front, that flat lock, and I'm going to want this in a variegated, that is going to be my top looper. So we'll do a sample of that just now so that you can go and see what it looks like. But that is really all there is to doing my flat locking. You can go and sew seams together. Even imagine making a t-shirt. Sew the sleeves maybe on and the neck sew it on so this is showing it gives you a beautiful finish on your garment i've also gone and folded a hem and when i folded it let me just show you i'm gonna fold one now uh, we have actually folded the hem and i press it there's my hem and i go back i just know sorry i've got i've got a thing if i go back this way i'm going to get the ladder stitch we'll do both for you or i'm going to go and fold it again so it's literally folded twice to the wrong side of my fabric. Let's go and sew that just to show you. And I've done this. Again, I'm really, guys, I'm not worried about cutting there. I know people, some people will say, oh, don't cut. I've never had any of my garments unravel when I've sewn that together with my flat locking. Mm -hmm. 
all right now all I'm going to do I'm going to again pull this flat and I've just gone and I've done a beautiful little hem for myself can you see it's caught in on the inside there and look at that now imagine doing a t-shirt like this if you are just a word of caution if you're going to do a t-shirt with this um, you've got to stabilize put a nice stretch stabilizer on as well so that I'm not distorting my fabric and battling to do this decorative stitch if you look at our Friday video that's coming out it's going to be our Friday feature we're going to be talking all about stabilizers as well but they I've gone and look at that it's a beautiful hem that I've done now again if I did it the other way around let's just do it the other way around remember I folded it double to the inside I'm going to go fold it as if it's my hem imagine that's my hem and all I'm going to do I would go press it I would literally go press it and I'm going to fold it to the outside and now I'm going to sew that and that's going to give me a little bit of a ladder stitch Don't worry about this happening. I'm not sitting there holding onto my thread. That is really just my tension that's very tight on the bottom deeper. Okay, so we've done it. I've folded this to the outside. And all I'm going to do now, I'm going to pull this open. And this is the right side of my fabric. I've now got the ladder stitch on the right side of my fabric. The inside. Look what my hem is finished like it it really looks like a cover stitch at the end of the day on the inside and i've also seen my husband has recently bought t-shirts from a certain shop and the t-shirts the hemming was finished with this ladder stitch on the sleeves and at the hem at the bottom which i thought was actually amazing because we can copy it with our overlocker and that has just given me such a beautiful finish that i I don't know guys I think just go play with it I get excited when I can see all the options that I do have when I'm working with my overlocker now I'm going to take you to the next step now I'm going to now do the same stitch with a thicker thread so that you can see how I set my my flat lock in now to work with the thicker threads I'm going to do the flat lock now with my decorative thread and look at the difference if you actually look at the decorative thread that I'm using and my polyester threads there is such a big difference I've gone and I've put this decorative thread in my top looper again because I wanted to show on the flat lock side and I'm going to have to fine tune it now because of polyester being a lot thinner I have to go and change my tension but how do you know now what what your tension must be and this is the tip that I want to give you don't just go when you've done your decorative thread to your decorative stitch that you want to do. Let's say your rolled hem or your um, flat locking or anything like that. I want you to now first go back to basic settings. Put your machine's tension all to basic settings. Mine is back on four. I'm back on a stitch length two and a half, which I know I'm going to actually go to a three just for my test because it's a thicker thread. My everything is normal my differential everything cutting with everything is normal I want you to first do an overlock stitch that's the only way that I'm going to see how do I have to set in my top loop of tension now when I look at that overlock stitch that is going to guide me how much I've got to go down if I immediately go to my decorative stitch where I've it's already taken the needle thread down I've taken the bottom looper up I've already played with the tensions now to try and, and actually perfect that top tension is going to be a nightmare for you so follow along and rather go and do a normal overlock stitch and we're going to just do the overlock stitch on my normal settings I'm not already I'm not playing anything yet I want to see what happens so let's go and have a look Look what's happened to my top looper, that, what it's actually done. Look at the photo that I'm showing you. Can you see how it's actually pulling my bottom thread? And that you'll see that's the light blue polyester. How it's pulling it to the top side of my fabric. Because of the thickness of that fabric, it's actually pulling up. Sorry, because of the thickness of the thread, it's actually pulling that bottom thread all the way to the top, which I don't want. I want to go and get a absolutely balanced stitch where this thicker decorative thread and my thinner polyester thread must still meet on the edge of my fabric when I get that sorted out 
then I know I can go on to my decorative thread that I want to work with. Now I'm going to again do a sample. I'm going to go lower. I'm going to actually go one and a half lower because I know I'm going to go quite a bit lower. I'm only concentrating on changing the top looper because that is where I've got my thread. I'm leaving all my other settings as they were before. I've gone down on my tangents one and a half on the settings and it's given me an absolutely stunning stitch. I know my machine already so I know I had to go immediately one and a half. But now if you look at my picture as well, can you see how the bottom thread, the polyester and my thicker thread on the top, they all meeting on the edge. I've got a perfect stitch. I am happy now. I can now go and do my decorative stitch. Now I know I've gone from a four to a two and a half. I went down with one and a half. Now if your top stitch, oh, I keep saying top stitch. Now if your top looper setting in your manual tells you it's got to be on, let's, let's just imagine it said it's got to be on five for this stitch or that was your setting that you needed. That is a setting for all the threads being the same, all my threads being my polyester. Now I know whatever that setting in my manual is, if that was five, in order for me to get a balanced overlock stitch, I had to go down with one and a half. Okay, that means for my decorative stitch, whatever that manual says that setting is for that looper, for that stitch I'm going to work, I'm going to take it down one and a half. I don't have to go guess now. I already know the balance between my polyester and that one was perfect when I loosened my tension or went to a lower tension with one and a half. I keep repeating it, but I want you to understand what we are doing. I have gone and done my check. I know it's one and a half lower. I take my decorative, I take my manual, I look what is that decorative stitch telling me my settings must be. It's telling me my needle must be at a setting, my top looper, my bottom looper. I still put my needle and my bottom looper at the tensions that is needed because I'm still working with my polyester. My art fabric, my art tension is going to be, or the art thread is the top. That's the one I'm going to set. Now my book is saying, let's say it said five. When I did my balanced overlock, I know I've got to go and minus one and a half. I had to go one and a half lower to actually get my balanced overlock stitch. So five minus my one and a half, I'm going to set for that decorative stitch, my thread tension to three and a half. I hope you're understanding how I'm explaining that. But that is how I work with decorative threads. I don't try and guess after I've set all the other tensions or I've gone directly to that stitch. I worry about getting my balanced overlock stitch. That is going to tell me exactly what I've got to do when I go to my decorative stitch. Now let's go and do a flat lock. Again, I've gone to my lowest for my needle. I've gone to the highest for my bottom looper. And I know that I had to go one and a half down. So I am on four, I'm on two and a half. My, my normal tension was on four for my flat locking. All right, let's open it up. And can you see now, even looking at my flat locking, it's perfectly on the edge. Can you see? It's not pulled one way. Everything is perfectly on the edge. Now all I need to do, I need to open it up. Look at that beautiful flat lock stitch. That has given me a perfect, perfect flat lock stitch. Looking at what we've done in this video, I really wanted to Concentrate on the decorative, the two decorative stitches, our roll them and our flat lock. But as I was talking to you, it actually went into a bit of troubleshooting as well. And I think that was really important to actually give you that information so that when you're sitting at home and you're going to take out those thicker threads so that you know how to set in your machine. So this is going to be a bit of a longer, or it was a longer video. So, but I wanted to give you all that information. What we can do with decorative thread and our overlocker is just amazing, but you've got to know how to set your machine in. And that was really the whole purpose for me at the end. 
as I said, I started off really wanting to just show you the stitches, but then I thought, no, let's just go further and we'll show you how to troubleshoot all those decorative thread. And um, I, I want you now to go and play. Go look at what threads you can get. Go look in the stores for thicker threads. You can go and use top stitching thread. You can go, like I've got this beautiful upholstery thread. Um, I can get it in so many different colors and because of that sheen it is it almost looks like a thick hand embroidery thread that's what it looks like for me I've got my variegated threads that I can play with um, there's just so much sometimes we even get those finer crochet threads you can even go and use those ones we get the most beautiful thicker um, especially Madeira the the glamour the metallic threads all of those are going to give us a beautiful finish. The only thing that you've got to be aware if you are working with it again, like I said, is your tensions. But I also want you to be aware that the thickness is limited to what I can get comfortably through the hole or that eye of my looper. If I'm putting it through and I'm getting it through there, but it's feeling like it's pulling tight, it's really battling to go through the eye, your thread is going to be too thick. You are going to damage your looper. Mine was thick enough so it goes through. It's giving me that finisher one, but I could still go and pull it without it feeling like it's almost pulling tight that it's going to bend my looper almost. You know, that feeling that we get sometimes even with a needle. I want you to test that. I don't want you to go and damage your loopers. So please make sure that you are aware of that limitation when we are working with decorative threads. I want it to be comfortable through that eye of the looper. I want to pull it and then I can go with my tension and get the perfect stitch. I hope that you've learned a lot today working with decorative threads and what your overlocker can do at the end of the day and start looking at ideas, start looking at what you can do. You can take off cut fabric, sew them together, go make a picnic blanket just to practice your flat locking. Um, I can work it into clothing. As I said, I can go work it into seams, especially my more active wear in that. I can go and work with that. Go ahead, do this now for your reference files. Make notes for yourself how you had to change your tensions. Where for roll them, where do I put my decorative thread? And if I'm working with my ladder stitch or my flat lock stitch, where do I need to put my decorative thread as well so that you put it in the right position so that you're going to get the effect that you want. Look out for our videos that's going to be on Fridays now as well. It's going to be our Friday features where we're going to look at certain products as well that you can buy to actually make your sewing so much easier as well. But for the overlocking now, guys, all I can say is go and play, go and have fun with your decorative threads and I'll see you again later.